Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we are going to take our basic selection skills to the next level and learn how to make selections using the magic wand tool, the quick selection tool, quick mask mode, and we'll also learn how to save our selections. If you want to follow along, I am using two files that are named blueeyeddog.psd and flower.psd. Both files can be found in the chapter three folder of your project files on your desktop. Let's start by talking about the magic wand. The magic wand is right here in the tools panel. The magic wand makes selections based on color range. Let's activate the magic wand and talk about that. The magic wand selects pixels by color value. The dog's eye color is very different from the surrounding color around it. So the magic wand would be a good choice for this. Now, what we want to do is look up in the control panel before we use any tool. The way the tolerance level works is this. If you need to select just a few pixels within the color range that you're trying to get, have a lower tolerance number. If you want to select lots more colors, bump up your tolerance level. So if you have a high tolerance, it's going to pick up not only just a few colors of blue, but a lot more colors of blue. A lower tolerance means less colors of blue. Let's get our magnifying glass and zoom into the dog's eyes. Before we do that, I would like to point out this feature right here in the control panel called Scrubby Zoom. Scrubby Zoom might be activated for you. I like to turn that off. That'll allow us to drag a marquee tool with our magnifying glass and zoom in directly on the dog's eyes. If Scrubby Zoom is turned on, it's a cool feature, but the way it works is it will automatically start zooming in for you. I like to have that control, so I usually turn that off. Okay, well, let's talk about using the magic wand now to select the dog's eyes. Let's grab the magic wand tool, and we have a tolerance of 10. Let's bump that up maybe to about 12, and let's click one time on the blue area of the left eye. The magic wand does pick up quite a few pixels very similar to the color that we selected when we did our initial click. Well, that's enough to build on, so let's add on to our selection. If you want to add on to a selection, you simply hold down the shift key and you get a plus sign next to the magic wand tool. If we go over to the left eye and click once, we'll get a few pixels selected, but why don't we click again and maybe one other time over in the right eye to add to our selection. Now, as long as you're holding down your shift key and you never let go, you can kind of bounce back and forth with the magic wand tool selected to add on to your selection. When you're happy with your selection, just let go of the shift key, okay? Well, as you can see, we do have a nice selection started, but it might be helpful to add on. Let me introduce something called quick mask mode. Quick mask mode sounds like it's a scary tool, but it's really, really convenient. Let's learn how to use that. If you look in the bottom of the tools panel, you're going to see a little icon here to the left. When you hover over it, it tells you that it's quick mass mode. Before we use quick mass mode, let's check the settings. If you could double click quick mass mode, this is going to give you the options dialog box. Now your opacity setting is probably set to 50% by default. Go ahead and bump your opacity setting down to about 20% and then click OK. Now the way this works is this red ruby lith color that you see in the background, that is your protected area, also known as your masked area. The area that you are trying to select is actually right here. So our goal is to add on to our selected area and we are going to do that by painting in white to add to the selected area and painting in black to add to the deselected area. So let's do that. Right here, these colors matter. Right now, black is on the top, so if I were to paint with black, that's going to add to the deselected area, right? If I paint in white, that is going to add to the selection. Well, I'd like to add to the selection, so I want to make sure that white is on the top and not black. One quick way to do that is to switch the foreground and the background colors. So let's do that. And now let's go up and grab our paintbrush tool. As with any tool, you always want to look up here in the control panel to check the settings. Right now I have a brush setting of six pixels, 
but that doesn't matter because we can actually change that on the fly with a keyboard shortcut that I'll show you as you paint. What you might want to do though is ensure that you have a soft brush rather than a hard brush selected. All right, so now all we need to do is actually paint with the white paintbrush tool and when you do, you're going to see how easy it is to paint with white to add to your selection. If you go out of bounds and you start selecting areas that you don't mean to select, all you need to do is switch back to black and paint to deselect the part that you didn't mean to select, okay? A great keyboard shortcut for that is X. When you click X on your keyboard, notice how your foreground and your background color changes. When black is on the top, you simply paint in black to remove pixels from your selection. So we'll click X, get back to white, and continue to paint in white. Now, if you need to change your brush size as you go along, the bracket keys on your keyboard is a great shortcut for that. So experiment by clicking your right bracket key a few times to make your paintbrush larger, and your left bracket key to make your paintbrush smaller. And then you can finish with your selection. To actually see your selection, we're going to need to get back out of quick mass mode, so let's do that. Let's click here on the quick mass mode one more time, and now we can see our selection. Well, that's probably good enough for now, so why don't we save our selection on a new layer? Let's go up to the layer menu, go down to new, and let's select layer via copy. That'll take our selection and put it on a new layer. If we need to verify that that happened, let's turn the visibility off next to the bottom layer called blue eyes. And now we can see our selection that's on a layer all to itself. This looks pretty good, so let's turn the visibility back on for the blue eyes layer. All right, so now that we have the eyes on a separate layer, we can make adjustments to that layer. But first, why don't we save our selection just in case we need it again. One quick way to select the contents of a layer is to hold down your command key if you're on a Mac, control if you're on a PC, and click right on the thumbnail icon. That will select whatever is on that layer. You may recall for this layer, all we had is the eyes that we selected previously. Why don't we go ahead and save this selection so if we ever need it again, especially later on when we close this document and reopen it, if we need the selection, we can get to it very easily. Let's go up to the Select menu and go down to Save Selection. We'll need to give our selection a name, so let's name it Eyes, and let's click OK. That's kind of a peace of mind for the future if we ever need to get to that selection again. Right now, we don't really need that, so we can Command-D or Control-D to deselect, all right? Well, let's select Layer 1 over in the Layers panel, and now let's change the eye color. With Layer 1 selected, let's go to the Image menu, Let's go down to Adjustments, and you'll notice a wide variety of adjustments that we can make. What we're looking for is the Hue Saturation Adjustment. When this dialog box opens, this is where we'll change the color of the dog's eyes. There are three different options here. The Hue is the actual color. So if we drag the Hue slider to the left, we are going to watch the dog's eyes turn green. Now, if you aren't able to see your dog's eyes change, it may be that you need to go here and put the check mark on next to preview. Toggling this check mark on and off also lets you see what you had before and what you're doing. So you can make the dog's eyes as green as you want by dragging the hue slider to the left. The saturation is the purity of the color. If you drag this slider over to the right, the green will become more vivid. And if you drag the slider to the left, it will become a more muted green. All right, so we'll just adjust this slider. And again, you can turn off and on the preview to see the adjustments that you're making. When you're happy with what you have, you click OK, and now we have a new eye color for our dog. The great thing about this is because we put the selection in a layer all to itself, if we decide that we made a mistake, we can simply turn the visibility off or delete our extra layer and we still have our original intact. But we're happy with what we have, so let's turn the visibility back on, and then we'll move over to our Flower Photoshop document and learn how to use the Quick Selection tool. 
One last thing to show you before we switch over to flower.psd and learn how to use the quick selection tool is I think you might want to know how to reload your saved selection just in case you ever need to. Let's practice with that. Let's select the blue eyes layer and we'll pretend that we need our selection again. Well, to get it, we'll simply go to the select menu and then go down to load selection. Any of our saved selections will be available right here in the channel drop down list and indeed there it is right there. It's called eyes. We'll click OK and there's our selection back if we should need it. Alright, very good. Well, we don't really need that right now so let's do a command D to deselect, control D on the PC and now let's go over to flower.psd and talk about another selection technique using the quick selection tool. The quick selection tool works very similar to the magic wand but in a lot of cases it's actually even easier to use. Let's talk about that. Let's start by selecting the magic wand because the quick selection tool is actually hidden underneath here. Now the quick selection tool uses the tolerance level that's been set for the magic wand so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now our goal is to quickly select that white flower so we could actually bump our tolerance level up quite a bit. Let's maybe go with 50 and click enter. And now let's toggle over to the quick selection tool. Now the quick selection tool again works by brush size and right now I have a very small brush. See it's a size 7. Well you might remember that using the bracket keys on your keyboard, I'm just pressing down the right bracket key, is a great shortcut to be able to modify the size of your brush very quickly. Let's bump down our brush size just a little bit and to use the quick selection tool there's a couple of ways to do it. You could hold down your mouse and just drag across the area that you're trying to select but I find it a little easier and you get better results to make little strokes independently of each other rather than holding your mouse down. So let's check it out. So what we'll do is just click and drag a little bit at a time letting go of the mouse each time. So to select this flower I only had to click and drag four times with the quick selection tool and you can see that we have a very nice selection of our flower and now we can use our selection in any way that we want. We could put it on another layer, we could put it in another document, or we could change the color the way we did earlier.